Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettifort. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to bring a prophetic word to you um, about divine reversal. Saturday morning while I was at prayer at my local church, I began to hear the Lord speak to me about preparing and getting our houses in order and redeeming the time. And I, um, with everything that is happening around the nations, in the nations, in Israel, and all of that, that's where my heart was praying into things going on. But then Sunday morning, I began to speak in tongues as the worship was going forth in the service and i felt as if god was unraveling something and i heard the spirit of the lord say divine reversal and so i want to share that with you and i want to break down what i believe he's saying and i prayed about this i just put out a teaching that you can watch about waiting on the timing of god because i believe that if i'm going to prophesy that i also or release prophecy on my channel that i also want to put out good uh, solid biblical teaching to go along with the word so that is my promise and my commitment as i uh, release the prophetic on this channel that God allows me to share. And so I prayed about this one and I wanna share it because I believe it has, um, it is for some people that are listening. And so what I saw and what I felt is that there were things that were being planned, that there was weapons that were being formed against God's people. And it wasn't something for everyone in the church um, as I was allowed to release the word. Um, and it may not be for everyone on this channel, but there are certain things that are weapons that are being formed against, against the people of God that will not prosper. So you won't even see it. And when you do see it, you'll see the other side of it. And you'll say, this is that which was spoken, that thing that formed that did not prosper. But I want to talk about divine reversal because it seemed like that there was a tug of war going on in the spirit or a release, a breaking through. And it was, a, and, and in the end, I heard the Lord say divine reversal. And so from Saturday, when he said prepare, it seemed like on Sunday, I realized that prepare was for the blessing that he has, which is what we've been talking about, the wealthy place. I'll link that video in here uh, in the description for you to see that as well. But the wealthy place that God is preparing for for his people to come out of, but that which was um, determined against you, that which was established against you, that which was set against you and decreed against you, God is turning around. And so I want to give some biblical um, foundation to this. And so the first one, I'm just going to go in order, is Hezekiah. And I had given this word and didn't even know that my pastor was going to minister out of the book of talking about Hezekiah and how God turned around something. So this is God's judgment. And he and the Lord said, set your house in order for you shall die and not live because Hezekiah had been sick because of some things that had happened. And then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord saying, remember now, O Lord, I pray you how I have walked before you. And in the end, what happened was um, as Hezekiah wept and cried out to the Lord, he, the Lord, before Isaiah even hit the had left he was in the middle of the courtyard and the word of the lord came back to him and said return and tell hezekiah the leader of my people um this says the lord the god of your father david i have heard your prayer and i have seen your tears and i will heal you and add 15 years to you and so that was hezekiah had a divine reversal and then the next one we read about here i just want to establish that this is a biblical principle that god can decree that God can decide when we cry out and it was like I was going into warfare and not only for myself I don't know what was breaking up that was set against me but it was breaking it up but then later other people told me oh that word was for me because I was going through something and God it was decreeing a divine reversal so then the book of Esther and I only picked three for time's sake the book of Esther where Haman had um, set to 
kill the Jews, have all the Jews killed. And as we know, Mordecai and Esther, Mordecai told Esther to go to the king. She fasted three days before she went to him. And in the end, because she sought the Lord and she followed his instruction and his direction, and she was led by the Spirit, and it was, she was just a wise woman, so she knew to fast, she knew to wait. So it wasn't that the Lord was saying, do it this way in particular. We don't have that in the book of Esther, but we know that she had fasted to give her strength and to call the Lord's spirit to help her. And so therefore, that wisdom was supernatural wisdom that she was using and, and acting on when she dealt with the king. And then there was a divine reversal. The king had decreed, let Haman decree whatever he wanted. And he said, I can't turn it around, but I can supersede it. I can give you the right to defend yourself. So it was a divine reversal that was put in place for them. And then I wanna go to this one in the book of Jeremiah we're chapter 18 the story of the potter and the clay but there's something here in chapter 8 and it says if a nation whom i have spoken if a nation a nation against whom i have spoken turns from its evil i will relent of the disaster that i thought to bring upon it and the instant i speak concerning a nation and a kingdom concerning a kingdom to build up and to plant it if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice then I will relent concerning the good which I said I would benefit it now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem thus says the Lord behold I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you return now everyone from your evil and make your way ways and your doings good so there are divine reversals so something that was set in motion that was good when there's a there's a scripture in the bible that says do not rejoice over the failure of your enemies because god will stop blessing you and help them i i know that i'm not saying that right i'll try and put the the actual verse in the description but that is a biblical and a divine principle so that when um, when you do good and, and you have done evil, that's why when you repent and you give your life to Jesus, things begin to turn around. Everything doesn't change instantly and you will have to still face some consequences, but you can set in motion good or evil by the way you respond to what God is asking you to do. And I believe that some people were crying out to the Lord. And I also believe that there's some things that God had asked me to do that I wasn't seeing before, but I submitted to what he had asked me to do, not knowing that he had prepared a divine reversal for me and whatever was coming against me. And some of you won't even see it until it's done. Some of you won't even know there are things that when we are under the secret place of the most high that we don't even know that God has protected us from and that's the type of prote protection that I saw on Sunday coming for some and then for others they knew what they were up against but that which had been decreed against them God had put a divine reversal so divine re <clears throat> reversal is something that God can grant you and it's something also as we see with Esther and Hezekiah that you can pray for. So you can ask for a divine reversal. So if you're in need of a divine reversal, if there's something that you have done or that has been set against you, then you can go to God and ask him what to, and cry out to him for a divine reversal. And he might put his finger on something and tell you to do this, repent of something or to do something else. And then that will bring that reversal but it has to be with a pure heart and and truly crying out hezekiah was gone beyond his flesh he was gone beyond just the natural and he was crying out from his heart from a place of his spirit and that is what touched god with um Esther, she had fasted to get past her flesh and to ask God to turn this around for the Jews. And all the Jews were praying and fasting and backing her up. And so God has a divine reversal and that divine intelligence, that's what I like to call prophecy, divine intelligence. I am sharing with you prophetic insight into how God um, how I've experienced God working. I don't know everything. I only know from the years that I have 
um, been in prophetic ministry and prayer and that type of thing. But these are the experiences that God gives prophetic or divine intelligence is what prophecy is about things that are to come. And he also gives like words of knowledge. And this was a word of knowledge for somebody there. And I'm sharing it here because I believe that there are people that will hear this and you will know how to go in and, and pray and seek God. And if you've done something and everything was going well and you got lifted up in pride or something like that, or you stopped doing what you what was working to get you there. Sometimes we can get someplace, but we don't stay there because then we get lazy. There is a, there is a scripture that says, make me not so rich that I forget you and not so poor that I still and, and, um, make God look bad. I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing. And so sometimes we can get someplace. And then there's another scripture that says, it's the Lord God who has given me the power to get wealth. And that's in Deuteronomy. The other one was Proverbs. And that scripture, it says the Lord God has given us the power to get wealth and do not forget him when we go into the land of promise and sometimes we can get into a thing and forget and so he told the children of Israel that I can also repent of the good that I've done you but if you realize and recognize he gave the children of Israel so many chances that you um, evil is coming on you from the hand of the Lord that he's allowing things to happen to you because of the way you were acting and then you repent then he will take that back and relent of that and release good to you and God is not um he says he's the Lord God that changes not. And so he doesn't change. We do. And his principles remain the same. And so he gives us his principles and he gives us these things so that we can know how to operate and know what pleases God. And so there's nothing more that we can do for our salvation, but accept it, but to receive and walk in the blessings on this side of heaven then there are some things that we have to do because many of God's promises and prophecies are conditional. And what does that mean? It means that we have to do something just like salvation. You have to believe with your heart and confess with your mouth before you are born again. And you have to sincerely believe with your heart. That's why the Bible points out heart. So it's not head knowledge, right? But it's with your heart. And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then you confess with your mouth. And so there's always something that we must do unless it's a verily, verily, and a surely, surely. But it's interesting because I forgot about that. Saturday morning, I began to hear the Lord say, verily, verily, surely, surely, truly, truly. And I was just saying that I didn't know what it was. But then on Sunday, I realized that he was saying, prepare, prepare, because that, because what is coming and it's not just the evil that's coming, but it's the good. And it's like, surely, surely that is sure enough, sure enough that he has committed to that. So there's prophecy that's conditional. And then there's prophecy and, and promises that are surely, surely, and verily verily that Jesus is saying this is truly a reality and sometimes it's not just a prophecy or a promise but it is a law or a principle which means that you still have to operate in that law and the principle the way that it works so if Jesus says truly truly if you do this and this is going to happen then he still means that exactly what he said but I heard him say surely surely and so there is something that God is going to do there's a verily, verily in this that he has put a divine reversal and that we can prepare for what's to come, for our wealthy place. And so I want you, if you know that that prophecy about wealthy place was for you, then prepare for it. Don't just... Um, let it come on you and you're not ready to receive what God has for you, but begin to prepare for what you've asked God for, because I believe that he has removed things that were hindering us by giving a divine reversal to that which was set against us and that he is wanting us to prepare for what he has for us. I hope that this blesses you. And if you um, believe that this word divine reversal is for you, please let me know in the comments. God bless you and see you next time.